Good morning, everybody. These are the three areas I would focus on if I had to start my psychology degree today in 2025. I'm gonna break down these areas and specifically where to dial it in, particularly for psychology majors. When we talk about mentoring and how to find a mentor, well, we know that mentoring is so important, particularly in academia, to get yourself to the next level, because this is gonna be the people you rely your letters of recommendation on, building your skills, even just opportunities such as conferences or manuscripts. One of the things that we have to think about in for getting a mentor is really to not just say, oh, I'm interested in your research and I love your work and I really want to be like you. All that is fine and dandy, right? But if you want to be really taken seriously, read their research. So when you read a mentor's research, uh, that's when you could really get more into depth what they do and what their interests are and what they want to promote or train people in or the expertise or what do you want to get trained in. And you've read their, these papers and really interested in building upon one of these, one of these papers of the ideas. Likely, you read these two to three papers, you read their future directions. And when you look at the future directions, this is where they kind of set up what needs to happen in terms of furthering this work. So really to recap, when you are contacting a potential mentor, make sure you read their work, be really educated in it. That really will help you get your foot in the door more, distinguish yourself more than somebody who's just cold calling, asking, Oh, do you have research experience? I need research experience. If I were a student now and maybe the mentor's work is really, really dense, I would actually get at this AI fluency piece. I would actually use something such as Google LM and then put article one, number one of the potential mentor, and article number two, and article number three into that and you could actually make either something a narrative sense like a podcast based on their articles so you could just listen to and it gets broken down to something you might be able to understand and then also you could able to chat with it a uh, couple of the aspects to chat right would be if let's just say they talk about an analysis such as like regression multiple regression that you don't really understand you could ask in a chat bot like in actually google lm just when you upload these articles you could be like tell me about the methods and stats used in these articles make them understandable to someone just starting out in psychology. So that would be the prompt that you would use to really, once you load these in, the mentor's articles, uh, then you would do some reconnaissance in terms of understanding their work, you know? And if you need to break it down, using AI is really the key. That, that's what I would really do in 2025. Like, th if I had to start now, AI just makes things so much easier. Likewise, if your mentor has a, like maybe a, a long video or a talk they did that is recorded, you could actually load it in Notebook LM as a source. When you do source, you just go into, there's a link, there's like a YouTube link, and it actually transcribes everything. So all of this is to just show your competencies, but be able to use uh, certain artificial intelligent programs to really jumpstart your knowledge, you know, to really get at this uh, understanding what the mentor uh, is, your potential mentor is talking about. So knowing the lay of what your mentor does in depth, but then also using it and really getting a deep grasp of it using artificial intelligence. I was discussing about these methods and statistics. These are the really the main drivers of this science, right? How are we studying for whom and under what conditions 
does an effect work? Uh, but one thing that's timeless is regression, right? Multiple regression, right? Multiple regression essentially is a predictive statistic, right? A lot of people think about when they talk about statistics, ANOVA and COVAs, all these like group differences, T-tests. But if you want to learn and really be really valuable in the field of psychology, it's all about prediction. Right, predictive models. This is what uh, large language models and even machine learning, these are what they're based on, predicting what is the next word gonna be. So regression is, is one of the ways that we predict, especially if you're talking about developmentally, right? What are the earlier factors that predict later outcomes? So really thinking about that, right? When you come up with these ideas, like what are these early factors that predict later outcomes? And then what are the potential reasons why, right? Because the, we would these are mediators, mediators or moderators. And then that being actually the driver of these potential effects. If you love that and you wanna go to the next level, I would go structural equation modeling, SEM, right? So essentially this is a multivariate statistic because usually with regression, it's only one predictor, right? You could predict one outcome. So uh, mentoring earlier in life, as example, relates to well-being later in life, but you, it's not just like mentoring, just having a mentor, it's actually but the mentoring functions, such as like support, professional, these are the things that are driving these well being outcomes later in life. So, being able to test that through regression and structural equation model. This is actually very pragmatic, right? A lot of people tell you uh, what I would say they don't, but I see a lot of people waste their time on is to find their passion you know, what they're really interested in. I've been doing this since 2006 and uh, mentoring others and in psychology. And these are the biggest waste of times ever because think about passion and interest. They go up and down, up and down. You know, relationships, you see pa really passionate and then it goes toward companionship and goes down. When you're starting a new job or career, it goes up, you learn so much and then it goes down. So one thing uh, is, is your passion and your interest you know it's, it's really about like getting at doing it you know getting that experience particularly in the supportive setting the mentoring part many people think the motivation drives the behavior but it's actually the opposite when you start doing something that drives motivation, right? You figure it out, right? This is why internships or working with research or understanding research, the whole process is one of the keys to, to figuring out all of this. So these are the things that I would stay away from, right? Finding my passion and being all that stuff. But these are the things I would really focus on, you know, targeting, finding potential mentors, all of this here, right? This, these are what I would do if I had to start my psychology degree journey today. Mentoring, finding the right one, and really reading on their stuff, using AI to really help pour gasoline on how, I, how fast I read it and how I could process it, and then target the actual regression, my, my skills on, target my skills on learning multiple regression and structural equation modeling, so I could really do any of this. Take a snapshot without me but thanks for watching i'll check you guys next time peace